and Marlo Earhart, my football friend, proceeds to drop three elbows to his face, blood sprays everywhere. And I see this kid melt into the floor. I don't even know what happened to him. And Marlo's like, motherfucker, pay the price, bitch. Because <laughs> he talked like Mike Tyson. Even though he's 290 pounds of sheer muscle. <laughs> oh, was my God. Sweet when you say walk, man. I'm like, thanks, Marlo. So like, you, uh, I don't know what happened. So you killed kid. someone. It could have been dead. I don't know. <laughs> Recorded live from Studio 12A in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. You're listening to the Josh and Friends Podcast. Hey! you for tuning in to the josh and friends podcast i am your host my name is josh and this week the show welcomes back ethan mcdonald and we'll be discussing a number of different topics including the best and worst parts of living in phoenix versus seattle my ultimate dream job if it was an actual possibility as well as some fantasy music scenarios if each of us had our own time machines. So sit back, grab yourself a drink, and help me welcome back to the program. He's a great friend of the show and one of my oldest pals, Mr. Ethan McDonald. Ethan, welcome back, buddy. Man, it's like it seems like it's been a long time since you've been here, but you're already back in the studio. Dude, to be back here for a second time. And Josh, let me say really quickly how much I appreciate you sending out the private helicopter, having Andy Matlock pilot that bitch, pick me up in Hermiston, Oregon, a.k.a. the Dirty Herm, and bring me back here for another pod. Uh, it, it's an honor, my friend. It was worth every penny. Sorry, it was an honor. Every penny. Yes. Well, and Andy's a fantastic pilot. And you know, hey, gas is a little bit cheaper than it was a year ago. So yeah. So hey, hey, I appreciate it, man. And the you fact, bet. like, how like you and Eric assembled that helicopter out of Legos and parts. That was creepy off the internet. But I was like, I mean, he's getting <laughs> in it. Question, I'm not questioning it. <laughs> it held. It held he's, together. I'm like, can you believe this motherfucker's getting in this helicopter? I was like, wow. And that's just it. after that's just after I showed you an episode of uh, Air Disasters with uh, yeah. with Kobe Bryant. I was like, there's no way he's getting in this, but you know what? He's doing I don't it. know. This is something about Eric and Andy's craftsmanship with the Legos. I just it made me feel very confident. So well, hey, I'm happy know, to be back. There you go. <laughs> it's good to have you back. All right, so what do we have going on, man? So you, uh, you last time you were on the show, we got some good feedback uh, because you kind of flipped the uh, script oh. on me. Like one of the legendary episodes, like you said before, with Lee Olson. Yeah, and you you started asking me crazy questions about what my favorite song of every year is for like fifteen years or something like that. It was that. like twelve. It was the years that we were in, in school. <laughs> but yeah, I like yeah. And then because of that, we ran out of time. I didn't get the opportunity to ask you the closing questions. So today okay. we're gonna re we're gonna recap that, and then we'll just kind of see where the conversation goes, brother. Let's do it, man. Let's All do right, it. Man, so let's do it. What do you got? What do you got for me this time? So, Josh, to turn the tables on you once again, obviously pretty epic times. I mean, you've been down here now for how many years in Arizona, sir? Well, I moved down here in October of 2011. And you're like a magic magnet that brought your brother down. Not once, but twice. Yeah. Given the first time interrupted by COVID. <laughs> it's easier when you have a place already for uh, someone to stay. So well, I'm going to be honest. And I'll be, I mean, it's a big reason why. Sarah and I came down, you know, before when we came and visited and did the first pod. Yeah. Uh, it's just the fact that it's one of the big appeals is like, oh, I get to go see one of my good buddies. And um, so it's just like, it's pretty cool. Just It's a bonus. It's a bonus. But, right. And just getting someone that knows the the lay of the land. Like it always makes a, a place a little less yeah. intimidating to come to. So, right, right. So appreciated your feedback on yeah. that. So um, what are the best and the worst things about moving to Arizona? What, what are some of the things that stand out to you about both the best and the worst? All right. And I apologize um, if my language is ever so slurry. I've been so, <laughs> I've been partaking in this great beverage that Joshua it's, has made me. It's all it's dry heat, and, but it's like a hundred and fifteen degrees out, and I'm a lightweight. And you're still you're you're down in uh, alcoholic beverages. So is it, that uh, alcohol? I yeah. didn't realize that. I, thought I was just drinking a really cool Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah. yeah so so yeah, talk to me, Arizona man. Best and worst. You okay, so some of the best worst? things about Arizona. Um, or the summers here. I'm just joking. No. Uh, so the, the, the best thing about Arizona is it's like you mentioned, it's a destination city. Yeah. So like now, if you lived in Gary, Indiana, not as inviting. <laughs> Who would live by that? 
although I did want to, I did want to go out and visit, yeah. but I just like, it just, it didn't happen. Um, but coming here, the Seahawks play here every year. Yeah. Oh, dude, the, that's a great point. The, the Mariners have their spring training here. True. They have one of the biggest sporting events of the entire year, which is the Happy Gilmore Phoenix Open here. Does that is that what the waste management used yeah. to be like? So it's just been repurposed. It's, okay. it's a no. It's just a, rebranded. It's, I just called that because oh, okay. it's a fucking it feels shit like show. Happy Gil- yes, okay. it's that. Totally times, get it now. It's that times ten. Like you have yeah. people like streaking and shit. Yeah, it's are they nuts. humping over uh, like a couple fat bikers humping over in the woods? It's I like, saw two bikers having yeah. sex. Yes. Yeah, well, so I'm not they, Jim. They announced I'm not a sequel. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, continue. Uh, so, <laughs> um, uh, the winter, the spring. Amazing. It's basically, in, it's kind of like summer in Seattle. It's like, yeah. you can't really beat it. You know, yeah. every you go up to Seattle, everything's purely green. The weather's perfect. You know, you hardly ever need to use air conditioning. True. So, uh, one of the best things about here also is probably the air conditioning. They have <laughs> ice cold air conditioning Amen. and pools everywhere. So, it's... It makes it easier, you know, yeah. and I don't like humidity. No, and there's none here. So it's dry, dry very, heat, sir. Yeah, very rarely do you get like the super humidity uh, here. In, Can I um, say too, it just seems like really easy to get from point A to point B around here. Like it's very, like you were talking about, like if you miss a turn, no big deal. Everything's right. like a grid. It's Everything's like a grid. Yeah. Trying to maneuver around lakes and weird. When, when I first moved here, I'd be like, oh shit, the direction said, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. What am I, what, what am I stressing yeah. about? It's like, take the next street, the next turn. It does. You don't have to worry about it. It's also uh, what a two and a half hour flight from. Yeah. It's like it's like taking a bus ride. It's like okay, just hop on the bus and go up to Seattle. It takes me friends. longer to drive home to Seattle than it did to fly here. Yeah, exactly. And then from Pasco. Yeah, and then you have a couple hours to you know, w- few hours to Vegas and Mexico and California, and it's like it's pretty awesome. Like it so is. that that those are the parts that are awesome about this place. Sorry, I forgot the logo. Sorry, Johnny. Sorry, Johnny, Johnny. We're trying to we're trying to. <laughs> uh, manifest you here, sir. Yes. So yeah, no, those are those are the good things that I, I think that are fantastic. Uh, and al- the worst. Alcohol is cheap here. Yeah, it is. Dude. I was <laughs> shocked when I when it isn't triple tax, like you said, in Washington. Like yeah, when a bottle of the giant delicious Kirkland vodka costs like literally twelve dollars. Twelve dollars. Like, are you shitting me? Yeah. And the big super bottle. We're not talking like yeah. just a fifth. Like I'm like, what? I was like, what is going on? Like, yeah, because be a lush. What did you say it was in uh, in Washington? Thirty six dollars, like triple the price. Triple <laughs> right? the price. It's easy. crazy. Yeah, because it's like uh, they have like the triple tax of uh, yeah the alcohol there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the worst things about this place is summer. Summer is not. It's you know, again for me. Um, I'm not like, you know, going out hiking every weekend here. So no. it's like, okay, it's kind of like a minor convenience to me. Like, so I, I thought it was going to, I was, I was going to, I thought it was going to be nightmarish right. moving here. Right. But, you know, that's thinking that I grew up in Washington with no air conditioning. There's no right. escape. Right. You so like escape. when you think about that, you're like, okay, well, how many people in Washington had air conditioning back in the day? Not, not Nobody. very many. Right. No. So like, here, you can't live without air conditioning, right? And it's just like it's it's a it's one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, well, I can control it, so it's like it's seventy two degrees or whatever it yeah. is, you know. Well, you know, it's funny too because I think you didn't send it to me, but I think I was looking up stuff on Arizona the the first time I came down before you sent the helicopter. Yeah, and uh, one of the funny TikToks that came up was. It says summers in Arizona, and it's the scene from Terminator Two where she's like up against the fence, and the nuclear bomb is like yeah. melting her, like burning. <laughs> and like even when I posted pictures uh, the other day from uh, Surprise, where my brother-in-law has a house, Aaron Arnold said like, "Welcome to the worst part of the year, you dumb mother." Yeah, like something right. along those lines is a comment. Like, why are you down here now? I remember when Lee came down here for the first time uh, in in August. I think it was for the draft. Mm-hmm. And he just kept making he kept making the joke. He's like, "Who the fuck comes down comes down here in August?" He's like, "What kind of moron yeah. comes down here in August?" August. I mean, this is I can't even imagine what August is like because I guess like the temperatures supposed to have tomorrow probably close to what you'd have in like late July or July, early August, right? July's what when is you yeah. August like 120s. What are we getting up there? Um, well, so just as an example, last year broke a record for I think it was every single day. <laughs> In the month of July, every single day except the last day, which I was pissed off at because one day screw it up. Why one? 
Why? why? God, why? Over 110 degrees. That's insane, dude. So, <laughs> and is that, that's record breaking. That's not normal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's usually not that overwhelming, but yeah. So when when that when that happened, it was you know again I I uh, I have like a job where I work, you know, I don't go into an office or anything like that. So basically, my job is like indoor. So like to me, I'm like, I mean, the news says it's hot, yeah. yeah. And like when I have to go to the store, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's uncomfortable, it's like, I guess, uh, when you're walking in and out of a store, but. Eh. Yeah. Flip flops are melting to the yeah, sidewalk. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, yeah. So basically, yeah. But I don't know. Um, the the worst things about Arizona, um, I think I I think I talked about this on a on a podcast once uh, previously. But basically, the worst things are like not being around my friends and family. Yeah. You know, but we miss you, Tina and Lee. <laughs> we miss you. But but one of the one of the things that made that so much easier for my decision to move down here is like, you know, technology. Yeah. FaceTime and Zoom and all these like things that made it basically, you know, like doing this podcast. It's like, okay, I haven't seen you. Well, we In haven't done flesh. this pod, you know, since the last pod we did, but it's like, I've been hanging out with you the entire time, you know? That's yeah, awesome. That so it's, it's crazy that you could actually have like this technology, like, you know, back in the seventies, the I would not be like be writing in letters. Right. Right. Or maybe send you like a, if it was the eighties, I'd send you a videotape saying like, <laughs> Hey, Ethan. Hey. So and let's say you're not talking back to the person. You're just talking to a, a video, yeah. you know? So I don't know that, that that's the worst part probably to me. Um, you made so many amazing new friends down here though, too. Like it's pretty yeah. awesome. Like, I mean, exactly. Rich to Eric and I mean, just yeah. a few to, yeah, I ton, guess Jen tons of friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess, Jen, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess. <laughs> We love you, Jen. It's yeah, easy. it's easy. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, no, I, I, I could probably think of more things. I, I think uh, the drivers are probably worse down here, which is bold because they're bad anywhere, pretty much. But well, they are. But I'll be honest, like they're, they're, they, they drive go, fast and they scare the shit out you of you. You can't compare this to where Lee. Like when I went to go see Lee in in the northwestern corner of Indiana, right next to Chicago, I, I've never seen anything like that. Really, Sarah was. I've never seen Sarah so terrified. Like. It was literally like you were in GTA five. Wow. Like there is traffic and it's like, I, I think the speed limit was like 65 or something like that. People were doing 90 miles per hour passing. us like we're standing still. What? We got traffic congestion because of like a downpour, like a deluge, like you guys have here, like a flash flood yeah. type of rain. And there are people because it was going too slow are just hauling ass at seven miles per hour on the shoulder, not even in a freaking lane, like zipping by, like almost knocking my side mirror off of my rim. Jesus. I'm like, what the F is going on? Like, I was terrified. I was white knuckling it most of the time I drove between where he, God, I can't remember the, the little town that was next to Gary. Um, but Carson? all the way to Chicago. Or no, that's, that's where, where you I'm live. from. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it was just like, it was insane. Henderson, like here, is, where, where does Lee live? Where been did Henderson. Leave? It might've yeah. been, but it was like, uh, it's just like here, don't get me wrong. They're pretty aggressive. But to me, it's like, it, it's not that different than Seattle, except Seattle, there's so much traffic. You don't normally yeah. get to speed that fast because right. you're stuck by just the congestion. But there's some stupid, aggressive drivers. This place is just as stupid, aggressive. They, it's just more wide open. You know, this place is really like the Wild Wild West where, like, they really don't pull a lot of people over here. I'm your Huckleberry. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> it's great. Great movie. Uh, they, they don't – I mean – I don't, get, no, I don't see a lot of people get pulled over. I've seen law enforcement officers since yeah. the time. And I drove from Mesa over to Surprise. And then, yeah. Are you technically Phoenix here, Josh? Because you're kind of squeezed. North Phoenix. Okay, because okay. you're kind of squeezed between Glendale yep. and Scottsdale, I yep. noticed. So. Yeah, but, so Scottsdale is like 10 minutes down the road. But and, it's technically its own little township, right? Or like its own little city? Mm, or is it part of Phoenix? It's just part of, like, it's just Phoenix. It's just one of the neighborhoods of Burroughs. That's why, that's okay. why they say that's Phoenix is the fifth biggest city, technically, like in the country. Because it's like, stuff. it's like the, the city of Phoenix and the city of Mesa and the city, like these, these giant cities would be like huge areas in Seattle. You know what I mean? Like wow. Seattle and like, there's like Seattle, Bellevue. Kirkland, you know, all these like little, you know, like yeah, little, well, little cities, it but it feels like it's one big city between Everett and Olympia. But in reality, they are little you're just driving. Cities. Like the, the fact that they include like so much yeah. land, like it's ridiculous. So, but yeah, no. Uh, so interesting. All right, sir. Anything else in closing thoughts about the best and worst of Arizona? Oh, so what would you compare the nightlife of Arizona like to the nightlife back in Seatown? 
Oh my gosh. Not okay. Well, it depends. Okay. So, cause it's gotta be good and bad for both of those. Right. Okay. Especially in your days of being club and before you were so old. Yeah. So when I first moved here, it was wild. Like there, I, I, I'll tell you this. Okay. You know, it's funny. You, your, your wife, Sarah, she said something that made me think of what you just brought up. Okay. So that the fact that she said, Sarah said, I don't like to wear winter clothes. I like to wear summer clothes. And that's a lot of hot chicks. <laughs> Cause they yeah, just, cause they want to show the fact that they're gorgeous fit. And yeah, like, so I feel that a lot of good looking women from the North, wherever, whether it's Wisconsin or Chicago, Seattle, wherever, all the, like the, you know, the belt of like the, the <clears throat> cold weather, they moved down to San Diego and so Phoenix and Austin. You're talking about a Florida. target rich environment. There are more hot ladies per capita. There is a ton. There's a ton of people. And so what, what, Amen, Joshua. what makes that, what makes that important is that. So if you, when I, I always, I always bring this up when I would talk to a, like, I was like, all right, I'll talk to this uh, hot chick in the corner in Seattle. When you would talk to that girl, she's like, Oh, why are you even like bothering? What the fuck? But right. so because here it was, it was a few big fish in a very small pond. Right. So you, but you move down here. There's a couple of reasons why, why women would approach you like here because there's a lot of women here uh, that are beautiful. I mean, not, not to say that there's not beautiful women in, everywhere, right. but, but there's a more ton, per capita. Yeah. There's a ton of women that are beautiful here and Nobody knows everybody here. You know right, what I mean? Like everybody's from somewhere else. Yes. So like people are from all over the country here because that's, this is a place where people move to. And it's still exploding so, and getting so bigger. people want to make friends. So it's like one of those things where we're like, okay, I want to make friends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to people, whether it's like, if someone's talking to me, then I'll be like, Hey, how you doing? You know, like, or, uh, Hey, I, what's going on? You know, yeah. like, I don't know. It's just, that was one of the, that was a shock That's to me surreal. because what do they always say about Seattle? That, what do they call it? The, uh, the Seattle freeze or whatever they call yeah. it or that something like that. Right. Yeah. I don't know when that term was invented, but I mean, people looked at like girls looked at you like you were an idiot. If you even tried talking to them, <laughs> it was crazy. It was like, I, I would, we would always joke about it. Well, you and I were not the two that were going to go approach a whole lot of girls in the first place. Cause right. we're also a little more shy in that regard. But, God forbid if you even try to, sometimes I remember like, I didn't go off it. I hate, I hated clubbing or going to a bar. I just, it was just so, even at Central was not my favorite thing. Like I let yeah. Sarah off and even go out and let a bunch of other dudes buy her drinks knowing she'd come home to me. Yeah. Uh, but just like, it just, I couldn't stand it because especially if you do have a girl, that's annoying. But secondarily, and then if you're not super forthright or one that's going to go approach a bunch of girls, um, Though I did love wearing the shirt that Johnny made me that said freelance gynecologist and getting slapped at bars at Central. That always, Johnny, that was epic. For me. <laughs> like, you think you're funny now? You Johnny? Think you're hot shit. And then Johnny Hess? Slap me. No, Johnny Hess. Just Johnny just... Racing. Okay. <laughs> you know. Come on, all the epic shirts he made. I'm with Steve. Oh, Bain. yeah. Johnny. Yeah. Johnny made this this little dime right here. He's a talented so, guy. Racing, I hope you see this one in here, my friend. But He's got to. He's got, got to. to. Yeah. But no, uh, yeah, just like, I just didn't love that anyway. And so the, the fact that if you I'll did tell make you, a mistake, Ethan, though, like even to say, yeah. excuse me, please. And they look at you like, yeah. right? Like you said, right? That, like, oh, no, that I was, asked you to move so I could get to the bar. Like, that was one of my favorite moments here is like when that, when I, when that super, like, I mean, she looked like a model. Okay. She came out of the bathroom and then she was dragging, you know, the uh, toilet paper from her oh, yeah, heel yeah, yeah. or whatever. And, uh, and I was like, hey, just want to let you know. And she's like. Uh, yeah, don't even try it. And then she put the, like the hand in my face yeah. and I was like, <laughs> All right, I'll let you walk around paper. that. I'll let you walk around that. That's, that's cool. I, I love it. You have some shit still in your drawers. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. No. So, but I'll tell you this though. I think Seattle has probably better dive bars because it's yeah. kind of more like a dive bar place. It's kind of like, you know, if you go to, if you go wet. to Miami, Miami's going to have more like outdoor, cool, like fun vibe bars. If you go to a place like London or New York, you're going to have better dive bars, right? Yeah, like, true. A, you know, or, or that kind of Foggy, style. Crappy weather where you got to kind of yeah. go outdoors. Yeah. So here, uh, they have kind of like that cool style of like 
half open bars where they have like, you know, in the summer, they have like all the crazy misters and stuff going on and everything like that. And, uh, you know, they have that section of Scottsdale, which is like old town, okay. which is, <laughs> I mean, I'll have to take you there yeah. maybe tomorrow. And you, you could see the craziness. It, you don't want to stand in line. We're way, way, way too old for that. Absolutely but, not. But you could see the craziness. You see the shit. Yeah. So it's a, I think one of my friends called it like it's a- be like interesting people watching, I'd imagine. Yeah. Like being at a zoo. Yeah. But like a hot zoo. Oh, a hot zoo. <laughs> Girl, you've never seen so many girls wearing like Next short skirts and, and high heels walking around. It's nuts. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think one of my friends said it was like a, it's Vegas on steroids. But it's like kind of like a little area, kind of like the central Washington University bars were in Ellensburg. Yeah, like all walking distance. Yeah, like really yeah. Nice. so it's kind of like that. But it's like these bars are just like, they are not like the central bars. They are like nuts. So yeah, crazy. Yeah. Well, let's flip the script here. And I know you've kind of <clears throat> indirectly addressed this question before too, probably on several pods and pieces. What are the best and worst parts of living in Western Washington? Going back to your memory of lecture there. I mean, obviously Andy just abandoned it to come down here, put the great job that Jen Found. Yeah, but like, and it was interesting, kind of picking his brain as we were talking tonight downstairs. Uh, what do you think are the best and the worst things about living in Western Washington? I was not one of those people that moved down here because I hated Washington. I know you still have a lot yeah. of love. I love Washington. I love Seattle. My most fond memories are, you know, in Seattle with all my friends and Seahawks everything. Football. Yeah, Seahawks. Uh, going Music. to endless Seahawks games and. Music, unreal. In Ethan's garage room, <laughs> the shrine to adolescenthood. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I just think that Seattle is amazing because I I love trees. <laughs> yeah, don't see me. And there's lots right? of trees there, right? One of my favorite things is like I will go to, I'll go to one of the parks and I'll just look up at the trees because I that's one of my favorite things in the world is looking up at trees and just look, seeing like the sky. It's a weird thing, but yeah. I do it. I love it. Um, so I love trees, right? Which yeah. is weird because I hit this place has different trees and they're weird trees, but it's like, so, you know, when you move to a different place, this is one of the most unusual places to move. Cause it's like, you know, the desert versus like, you know, Seattle, which is close to the, you know, the Olympic rainforest, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's so, it's so different. Like, so when it, when it rains here, people get really excited, right? It's kind of like in Seattle when it, when it gets sunny. I remember, I'll never forget this. When we were at Roadway, uh, I was working with Heidi. Our boss used to say, okay, guys, it's supposed to be 85 degrees tomorrow. I don't want anybody calling out sick. Because if, if people called out sick, it would devastate our little tiny little center yeah. of people who are taking calls. So, because like, that's what people, remember, like, people would like call out sure. or skip school to go to Alki beach or wherever, yeah, you know, it was one of the few days over 80 degrees. In the, <laughs> right. the you had to take advantage of that shit. Yeah. So like here, when it rains, it's like, Oh, Whoa, this is amazing. Oh my God. And I, it gets actually overcast and, and rains here more than people think. I, I just thought it was only desert, only hot all the time. And I love the fact that Seattle, I, I heard this on uh, some guy was talking about this, some, some Hollywood guy. He was talking about, you know how those guys like, uh, they do those rounds, like the media tours where they, where they go on those shows like evening magazine and yeah. stuff like that. They're like, they never skip Seattle when they do those because Seattle is like the number one movie going city in the country <laughs> or, or it was <laughs> because I mean, it makes sense, right? It's like, sure. well, it's a uh, bad weather, cloudy or? and rainy today. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Well, and that's why they probably have some of the greatest music and rock bands ever too, right? Why to go inside and play that's, their instruments. I remember Cornell was like, he's like, hey, yeah, you stay inside, you play guitar, you're down in your basement, you're, what else are you going to do? You know? Yeah. So I love that. You know, yeah. I mean, we probably know more about pop culture and stuff like that than the average human being because we spent so much time listening to music and watching movies and shit like that. So all my buddies playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons back in the day. <laughs> I remember, I remember, uh, Adam Carolla making a, a great point. He goes, goes, think of, he goes, if you could, you could take the latitude of the world, you have like Seattle, yeah, Chicago, New York, London, the greatest inventions Berlin. of all time are like 
pretty much around the same area. He goes, where, you know where they're not? Down on the beautiful beaches Vegas of or California, <laughs> of or, like, of like Mexico. Hawaii. What's the greatest invention of Mexico? I have no idea. Cerveza. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you're like, Margarita. I'm like, I'm looking at this beautiful beach, this, this aqua blue beach with these white sand and I'm drinking a beer. Like, does this make you want to invent something? Does this make you want to create some music? No, not really. It makes you horny. <laughs> <laughs> Because ladies start wearing less. That was one of my favorite things. Summertime when the weather is fine. That's a good song, Mungo Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Good song. You got women on your mind. It's true. Yeah, yeah. That's what you think about. You don't think about like how do I invent a better? Yeah, whatever. How do I come up with? Right, like that ain't happening. Ha! Let's invite. Let's let's uh, let's create Microsoft. Maybe uh, some really good sex toys came out of that though. Down in those places, I mean, who knows? I mean, that's possible. A lot more sex than people that were like like in sweaters and now I want to look this up. in Seattle. I want to look this up guessing. now. I'm just guessing. Um, <clears throat> let me ask you this then, sir. So, what are the worst parts, if that's not obvious, then of living in the Pacific Northwest? What were some of the things that you don't miss? Oh, because I know rain probably didn't bug you. Like rain no. was never. So the reasons I moved here are like okay. There's a, I, I used to have like, there's like a five reasons that okay. I moved down here. I can't remember them all, but I'll sure, try. It's been a while. You've been so, here for a long time. Probably forgot. Yeah. I was like, so basically it was like, it was or that maybe weird. I kicked you during a Turkey bowl game and you forgot some of these. Yeah. Things. I was like, I got the fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> that was right around that time too. Uh, I think I left the next, like the, later that year or no, the next year, or is it right before that? No, I don't know. Oh, there's like the next year. Maybe Might anyway, the next year. Anyway. So, it was a weird time. Like basically all my closest friends were kind of like marrying off, you know, sure. kind of doing their own. And I was like, well, it's not fun anymore. It's not as, it's not as fun, you know, going out. It was, it was just kind of different. You know what I mean? So like that was kind of different. I could not find work for what I was That's doing. That's a bitch too. Yeah. And, and what happened was Phoenix was one of the wor- first places in the country to crash, right? Seattle oh, yeah, yeah. was one of the last places to crash. So, when I got laid off in Seattle, I couldn't Phoenix find work. Is already recovering, and and they were starting to recover here. So I was like, okay. Then I made a trip down here, and I can't talk about who I came to visit, but uh, but I came to visit this guy, and basically he had this place that looked like it looked like you were looking at a magazine, and he had this pool with a mountain view and sunny, and I go, dude, how much how much do you pay for this place? And he's like. Eight hundred dollars. I was like, "How much would this be in Seattle?" And he's like, "Oh, a couple grand." And I was like, "Dude, I got to get down here. <laughs> like, I got to get down that here." Was a, see, like, just because I could cheaper. practically live for nothing down here, right? Yeah. So that was a that that was a, that was huge. Uh, when I when I came to visit, I was like, "Oh, okay." Now it's now it's and and the dollar goes a lot further. Dollar went a lot further here. And also when I, when I came down to visit, I thought that Phoenix was just a debt, like That's living in Seattle, you don't, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I, maybe it was just well, naive. You, well, we don't know until you get out of the world and travel. Yeah. You just have these perceived like things that are just not necessarily I, true. Dude, I, I just thought, I, I was like, oh, it's just cactus and dirt. And I was like, I, I don't know anything about this area. So I, when I came down here, I was like, holy shit. Like. I, and fucking Dan Marley from back when we used to play the Phoenix. Dan Sons, Marley. Damn Dan Marley. Damn Mar- right, Charles exactly. Barkley. Well, and Tom Chambers when he left us and went to the Phoenix. I met Sons, Tom too. Chambers down here at a what bar. A dick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could have been great. Was he good? He was, was a he nice good? guy, I guess. Oh, good. Cool. He was like, nice to meet you, Tom. Yeah, that's crazy. He's so tall. <laughs> He's like ridiculous. I was like, Sonics wow, this for guy, life, baby. Sonics for life. He doesn't stand out. <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, you know, it was just a, it was a number of different things. Like I, I, I always tell people, I go, I didn't move down here because I hated the weather. And there's a lot of people that did. Sure. There's a lot of people that do. My wife would be one. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Cause like, she was like yeah. saying she that yeah. Eastern Oregon is a little, it's not, it's nothing like Phoenix, but it's not Seattle. It's deserty. Yeah. yeah. High the, Plains desert. That's kind of like a Jen. Jen's like, I love summer here. I love it. Girls love summer here. And I'm like, God, man, like. God, you know, lizards. We're, they're lizards because they're yeah. cold blooded species. Yeah, because they need the heat. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, you know, you probably like me. We run hot, you dude, know. Dude, so I'm 250 pounds. I create my own weather system. Ethan, I had to go through several different like blankets that I have down here because, like, they, Ooh, yeah. a lot of the blankets are those like synthetic shit Ugh. that you put on and you're like, I'm just sweating and it's not even hot out. Like, what, what is this? It's like yeah, terrible. So, yeah, I finally found a, a, a heavy 
like blanket that's made for like being in like climates like this. Oh, interesting. So yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, I don't know if I'm answering your question. You I are. just keep uh, answering different things, but Let me ask you this, Josh, cause you mentioned the fact that when you came down here for work and other things to just get more opportunity, let's back up. And um, obviously this would be just a fascinating thing. Cause clearly you wanted to be a radio man. And the, the unfortunate thing is right when you got your communications degree, the world of radio was slowly changing and dying because I know you're a huge fan of guys like Stern, BJ Shea, um, I'm sure there's some other ones that were hugely influ influential, maybe like an Adam Carolla as well, because I know you're a fan of him at one point in time and stuff like that. The shock jock, Tom Likas. Yeah, absolutely. Tom Likas is a big <laughs> one. I'm sorry that I forgot about him. If you could craft, regardless of air, like your dream job, because of your love of music, but you're also your love to, to bring stories to people and stuff like that, like what would be the dream job, sir? Is it something outside of radio? Is that just... Okay, well, okay. So those are two different questions. Okay. So the first question is, what would I like to be if it was like a radio job, like a radio kind or of like, just right? whatever I was a dream job. It was my original so I, we I never radio. really wanted to be a Howard Stern sure. or like a, I, I liked Fred Norris on that show, who is the board op who got to play all the drops and, and speak occasionally and still be a part of the, I love the idea of radio. I was talking to my brother the other day and, and we were talking about, I was listening to Stern and I, I kept pausing it. And I was like, I was like, this is weird. Like, uh, he's just, he's, he, he's not, he's the opposite of me. He's like, he's not a radio. He doesn't understand radio or, you know, podcasts and stuff like that. He does them, <laughs> but yeah. he's just not, it, it's not, he's like, I like, you know, watching, you know, videos and, and watching stuff. He's like, I never got into like the radio kind of thing. And I was like, huh? I go, cause me, I'm like, I'm always, I always want to hear something or, listen to I, I i love the aspect of radio yeah i've always loved it so i always wanted to be a part of radio like but i i was never really like the guy didn't that want wanted to be the guy i didn't necessarily room. want to be that guy. i think you could be i, a, I would be a i, I would want to be a co-host or like a, a programming guy too like how much would you love to pick the music that everyone else that would be fun to curate That'd the be fun, like a program director like yeah. when you and i were talking music before director. with like lee about the loss of things like these radio stations that help curate and get the music into our ears that could help choose and affect our taste and like yeah. put music that was obscure. I love that. That that would be so yeah. fun, so hugely like yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, that'd be fun. That's a, that's a that that would almost stress me out because sure, but you know because you're yeah, always asking see. me these and I'm like. I don't know, man. There's so many, pick? so many pick? songs, man. <laughs> like, I don't know. But so, what about the know. dream job overall? Then, if it's not radio? oh, well, the dream job overall. That's the easiest question in the world. Easiest question in the world. The life of Hugh Hefner. <laughs> All right. Get into the details. What is it about Hugh? I, pretend I'm naive. Okay. Josh. So pretend I'm from a have Canada you, and I, I don't mean, know who Hugh Hefner is. <laughs> I am from Canada, <laughs> but I don't. I don't. I do know you. Pretend. No. So Get so into the details. The graphic. So details. basically, there's a lot of shitty stories about Hugh Hefner, right? Sure. But Hugh Hefner also is a pop culture icon well so he started out he he created that magazine i think it started with him buying those pictures of marilyn monroe sure and that was like his ticket to okay okay yeah. everybody wants to see this chick naked right so so anyway he he, he gets everybody he, wants some <laughs> that, want yes some yep, yep. so hugh hefner creates this empire basically makes these underground porno magazines accepted in culture and not only accepted but famous women would yeah. want to be in these magazines right people forget that a couple of legends of auburn high school yeah i have that issue i know you do <laughs> oh yeah it's pretty legendary it's it pretty, legendary. pretty legendary yeah i i worked with uh, one girl on the right and the uh, middle girl i yeah. uh, we went to high school with yeah I don't know who the other girl is, but it was the third girl that was a few years later. <laughs> I can think of her name right now, but I won't say it on air. Wow. Okay. She, both the girls that made it had every right to be in there. They were very attractive young women. Let's anyway, move on. let's so, move on before I get divorced. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. So he was also a civil rights activist. I want to live in a society in which people can voice unpopular opinions. There are probably a lot of people today out there enjoying freedoms who have no idea that Hugh Hefner was the pioneer who got all the arrows. Give me the 
playboy in Chicago. He was one of many human beings during that era that fought against injustice. We repurchased the franchises and opened them up to all of our members, both black and white. 30 years from this year, Negro can become president. Half helped build that audience for a different attitude about civil rights. Listen, there's bad shit you could say about every human Everybody's being on the planet. Yeah, it's like, a you know what I mean? Story. And, uh, but the fact that this guy had these clubs and then had the famous house that everybody wanted to go to the parties, you know, I mean, it's legendary. I, I got to see him, uh, right next to me. I was like, uh, is that Vegas? And I was like, what's going on here? Like wow. everyone, everyone just started rushing over to the, uh, to the front. And I was like, what's going on here? You know, this right before everyone got cell phones. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll rush over like everybody else. I don't know what's going on, but, and then, uh, you see this big giant SUV white limousine and it's just like, and it's yeah. like just uh, black lights and like spinning lights and stuff like that. And you like, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And then you see all these, like these, these five blonde chicks come out and then you see Hugh, Hugh Hefner and I'm like, Whoa, whoa. fucking Hugh Hefner. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm That's like, Whoa, cool. is it the hard rock? Yeah. The old hard rock. Yeah, so that, I don't know. It, it's just kind of like uh, it, if you ask most men and they give an honest answer, that's going to be it a lot of the time. I know that the old Ethan probably would have been up for this, but... Well, there's a difference between a single Ethan <laughs> and a very happy married Ethan. There you go, Josh. There you go. That was a very taming factor, but I'm just saying, yeah. Um, which is an interesting thought. So here's a weird question. Where did the name Angel Face come from for my wife, Joshua? Because you met New Sarah before I yeah. did, technically. You met her in Central well before yeah. I got up there. I I feel, I feel, Ethan, that... that Is that what I feel under the table? <laughs> I feel... <laughs> whoa. <laughs> I feel that... Uh, I'm, I'm, I might be responsible for your, uh, for your marriage in some way. I, <laughs> I don't. So anyway, I don't know. no, I remember, I, I remember I told you cause you, you would call me and you're like, so how's, uh, how's, how's central going, man? Yeah. And I was like, you gotta get the fuck over here. <laughs> yeah, you did. Cause you like we, I, I go, Ethan, I found out we have the hot dorm. We have the hot dorm. Dude, you weren't joking. Either. That came out the first time and the amount of girls that you showed me. And like, I just felt like, even if like we went to like, was it Holmes at the time? The the dining hall. You took us for food. No. So we we initially went to what we did was we went to the uh, the little tiny. The it was like the deli. little diner. It was like the the little kind of like the you get your food. Yeah. Uh, at the, wasn't that the Holmes not the hall? not the dining center, not the big old oh. giant like sit in one. It was the it was the one that was kind of like a store, but it was well, like a well, deli. Is kind of yeah, the Depot Deli. It's yeah, right the Depot there. Deli. Yeah, yeah, right next. That's to what it was. El Monte. Yeah. Yeah. And we always go, I'm like, what is and I, going on? Yeah. It's like, Cause like we had this like insane, like looking women. Very at this attractive place. women. I remember uh, this one time, I think Ryan came over and I was like, Ryan, or no, Ryan goes, uh, he's like, he's leaning over. He's just like looking, uh, he's like, I think you could see the uh, pavilion center from here. And I go, yeah. And he goes, and then he looks down and he goes, holy shit, get over here. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what? And he goes, what the fuck? And, uh, and I, and I look down and I go, Oh yeah, dude, they're always down there. And it's like these, th like the most insane looking women you've ever seen, like just sunbathing down below and like on the little grass, like for it. And right, I go, Oh hey, yeah, little dude. Bastard. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I go, yeah, legend. dude. I go, yeah, that's uh Heather and her oh, yeah, Heather blonde Discover. friend. Yeah. And uh, so, so I go, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Um, well, the swimmer was, Heather was the dark haired one. Yeah. Cause Sarah was like, was roommates with her at one point. Oh, it was, oh, Heather with Heather, not yeah. the swimmer girl from Piala. Who the hell's that swimmer? She remember. Well, I know her that she was a swimmer now, but that was the big, tall, blonde girl. Yep. That was her best friend. That Sarah yep. like knows all these girls very well. She'd tell me these stories later. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so we uh, we used to always call like. I, so basically, we had nicknames for a couple of, of them. them. Um, I'm sure. I I don't I don't know that we had like nicknames for all of them, no, but we definitely had a nickname for sir that one. And we'd be like, oh, there's, there's Angel Face. There's Angel Face over there. And, uh, and they were like, oh, man, that chick's like so ridiculous. Well, yeah, you kind of pointed it out to me. So that's the very first time I saw her. And then when I thought, yeah, no, I, I, I actually Roman. said that. I go, yeah, yeah, we call that one Angel Face over there. And I remember that very, very, and then that was, remember the thing, I might have not remembered that fully, 
And then until you came back up, you go, oh my God, Ethan, is that Angel Face? Or kind of something, because she was at our party. I wasn't dating her at that time. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, Because Lee, I think, confirmed. Because Lee came up more often than I did. I just didn't make it up there as much as I would have yeah. loved to. Um, yeah, you came up a few times when I was up yeah. there, right? But it was just like, and like Lee had a class up there before I even got oh, really? to her. Yeah, he had a class like in Calm up there, and she just thought Lee was hilarious and all that kind of stuff. So it was just one of those crazy things of like uh, weird divine. I still don't believe, like, man, I pinch myself every day. Like, wow, what? How did I? Uh, but because, you know, to know Sarah too, she's not just a very pretty girl. She's, I'm not just saying this to get points, honey. Um, she's just a very nice human being as well. But yeah. no, this is like, it's just crazy that I remember you pointing her out. I remember Mo, cause we had talked about her cause she'd point like, I, Mo just called her hot Sarah whenever Mo would come. So hot Sarah come and I go, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. Like, hot Sarah? cause she was dating a guy at that time on her football team. Yeah, so I know that's, that's, that's all like, I knew. So all I knew is like, Mark uh, Acker, who's this oh, I'm like, well, I'm like, well, well, she's dating some dude. So, well, yeah. that's off limits. So yeah. yeah. And she was like, I mean, and whatever, there was always, there like most beautiful women in every college, there was a line of guys waiting. So if she ever broke yeah. up, there was someone waiting to swoop in immediately, yeah. which maybe thought I had no chance, but this is a shout out to an old Auburn original gangster of Suzanne Marsh between you and yeah. Suzanne. You're the one that first pointed out to me and then and she Suzanne introduced working the magic. Yep. 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 So what's Suzanne doing these days? You know, that's a great question. I wish I knew a better answer to that. Like I wish I even could talk to Danny more. Often. Yeah. Yeah. Danny Marsh, absolute legend of Auburn. Uh, one of our good old friends from so long, and I know he's been through some unbelievable challenges, but he's on the mend and doing and doing quite well. Uh, Suzanne, to my understanding, she's got a couple kids that are big time into hockey. Really? Yeah. And wow. so she's just a hockey mom. Dang. Doing that. And f- from what I see on social media, she seems like she's doing well, but good. I'm on social media a lot less than I used to be. All this political horse shit that I just don't really care to this see. This is not or. the greatest year to be in. A- no, but even like the last, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, just the yeah. last couple. So. Mm-hmm. Other than wishing people happy birthday and checking out a few of my friends that I care what they're posting, like what you're posting at the podcast or stuff in our AFL league or stuff like that. <laughs> I, I just don't, I don't give you a ton. Um, I post probably at nauseam pictures of my wife, uh, to many people, but it's like whatever, deal with it. I'm, it's my digital memory book because I've been hitting the head a lot. I don't remember. People aren't things. getting uh, upset with the, uh, the postings of I mean, uh, Stacy's mom. Stacy's mom's got it going on. <laughs> we'll call it Riker's mom. Riker's mom. Oh, there you go. Got it going on. Dude, it works. We need to. We need to do that. Do that in karaoke, but change it to Riker's mom. Talk sorry, to me. A sorry, little. Riker. Yeah, poor Riker. <laughs> and Riker gets so fed up whenever I do this stupid shit that like parents love to do in front of their kids. Talk about how hot his mom is. Or like, oh, whatever. God damn it. Damn Dude, sorry. come yeah, on, he gets, man. He gets come pissed. on. He gets pissed at me. So you've seen some epic shows, Josh. And one of the cool questions that you posted, um, if anyone hasn't seen this on the Josh and Friends uh, page on Facebook, you had a great question regarding wristbands. It was like this theoretical question of like, yeah. if you could go to either every show you wanted to for one year, like unlimited tickets to the shows, I'm assuming like in a single town. Yeah. That was option one. <laughs> option two was going uh, with the band of your choice on their big tour around the country or the world. I can't remember what exactly the verbiage is. might have been the world. Third was to bring back or, or reunite a band or bring back a musician bring back a you know an artist or musician or passed band. away or is yeah it, that isn't together anymore and the fourth would be if you could pick like any show in history like the perfect lineup for you what would you select and a lot of people um i wish more would get on there and put a comment because i'd love to hear people's yeah. ideas on it but because that's such an epic question for any of us that love live music um why don't you share your answer to what you put there a little bit Talk about it's a tough it's a tough saw. question because Especially for you I'd imagine well yeah like, I, I, I was like a lot of directions yeah I I, I went back and forth because there's like so many great concerts that I, I'd be like uh, that'd be that'd have been awesome to go to now it some people would be like yeah Woodstock and I'm like Woodstock have you guys seen the documentary that it looked like it looked like a miserable time like it's like muddy and no, you know I mean, it's it's Are you peaceful. The original or the Woodstock '99 or both? Well, okay, I'm talking about the original, but I'm t- I'm just talking about like there's miles and miles of cars. Like nobody's going anywhere. It's like just a, you know, people had to be helicoptered out if you had like got you oh, know geez. an emergency. They they had to fly in food. It was just it was a disaster. The, the music and the awesome. people were peaceful, but the it doesn't look like a fun time. The you know? fire fest. I'm just joking. Yeah, fuck. I showed Jen that. Yeah, I showed Jen awesome. that. Uh, but now, like concerts that happened like over a day or something like that, sound kind of cool, like a Live Aid, yeah, which would be amazing yeah. to me. Um, some of these festivals that I see, like uh, 
uh, <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, have you seen the, um, y- you know, Rammstein? Yeah. And I don't know if you've seen, uh, like, on YouTube, the crazy shit that they do at these concerts. No, I'm not aware of what they do in live. It's fucking insane. Do. Do yes. lost. And I'm like, I, I, I look at Andy, like, do the slow kind of like, this would never happen in the United States. <laughs> okay. They would never be able to do this well, shit. I'm, I'm very intrigued. So that would be kind of, I, I, I literally said to Andy, I go, this actually makes me want to go over and see a concert in Europe. Like a true like, festival show? You know, there, Europe just... is kind of uh, fascinating to me too because there's like, you know, those countries like Denmark and like some of these countries are like massively into metal. Like, yeah. like that is their, their thing. Countries, it's crazy. Time. So, and you Huge, see these giant festivals. Lineups, yeah. It's wild. So, uh, so that looks fun. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's like, there's a lot of concerts that I, I would love to go to, but I mean... I said, John Lennon, bring bring me back some John Lennon. Totally get that. You're a because, big Beatles fan. Well, here's why, too. So there's been a lot of people that have like either died in plane crashes or whatever. Um, but John Lennon took five years off from making music, came back and made arguably some of the best music he's ever made. And then he got assassinated Assassin. right after that album came out. And I'm like, oh, motherfuckers, really? Right like, you sit and make a, who knows what he would have made through the rest of the 80s and the yes. 90s, man? It been so, cool. but it, it could have been like, you know, Paul McCartney, mid to late 80s, yeah. early 90s. Not my favorite Paul McCartney eras either. Yeah. But so. Who Still. knows? It could have been a it could have been so a good thing. Well, not, it's not a good thing that he got his head. Well, I'm going to look at make sure I got this right so I don't miss any. My choice, and given there's some other ones, like some of our buddies put like bring back Dimebag Daryl for like Pantera. So a lot of our buddies, especially I think it was Aaron. The Hall, only good thing about that, not, and not that that was good, but I'm saying the only cool thing about Dimebag is you got to see him several times, right? I did. I How many times Pantera. did you see him? Oh, man. I wish this is embarrassing. Like sometimes these things blend together. It, more than three. Okay. And like the one show that stands out epic in my mind is probably right around 2000. We went to go see Pantera at the Seattle Mercer uh, Arena, whatever the heck that was, Mercer yeah. Coliseum, whatever they called it. Um, and that was the show that we, I go with my buddy Robbie from college and my buddy Marlo. We barely could even get there. There's so much snow on the pass. We had to go around some weird way through Clee Elm on some back freeways wow. to like get there because they closed the pass because of the snowfall. We finally get there. We missed whoever opened that particular time. Um, and literally as we're going in, my friend Marlo, who's like, talks like Mike Tyson and is 290 pounds of pissed off. I don't know what mix of nine races he was, <laughs> rips his shirt as he runs in and just starts throwing haymakers, dropping like seventh grade kids. I'm like, what is like, I'm like, we're going to have to bail him out of prison tonight. Oh my God. It was insane. I finally fight my way because we, we didn't get to get there early. Like normally you'd f- kind of make your way and yeah. slither between while they're doing sound check. So I had to fight my way to the front because I oh, you made watching. it to the front. I love watching Dimebag play. Yeah. So I make it to the front, which, you know, me and like you talked about me in middle school when we were downstairs, you know, like I can plow through people, like few people on earth. So I get up to the front, fight my way up there, but there's some people that are pissed off that I fought my way up there. So there's guys trying to punch, but you like, you're so tight. You can't really turn around and defend yourself. Um, and I'm sitting there looking at Phil Ensemble, who's just to my left here. And I've got Dimebag to my right and I'm watching Dimebag shred. And they're playing some deep cuts off of like uh great Southern trend kill. Like, and I'm screaming word for word back at Phil because I was huge into Pantera, pissed off, angry white kid playing football at college. And Phil recognizes I'm singing everything. So I get pulled up to sit on the front of the stage, given a mic, and I got to sing Walk, which is no. like one of the most iconic songs. And it was absolutely epic. I got to what? sing Walk on stage with Pantera. I get back down in the front row, and the security guys were good because Phil was very important. Like, you, you yeah. protect the fans. As I get back down there, a lot of guys are like, Fuck yeah, like pat me on the back. About another song or two in, this guy from behind keeps punching me in the back of the head. Uh-oh. 
keeps trying to wrap his arm around my throat. I can tell he's considerably shorter than me, but I'm not in a position to turn around. And my neck is so like from football stuff, like I have very limited rotation. I'm just angry. And a couple of times I just throw my head back, trying to hit him to get him off of me. Like, get off of me. This guy keeps trying to choke me. Finally, I kind of half turn around because I'm pissed because this guy, like, I can't even watch the show. This guy's at me. And I'm about ready to try to do something when I see him grabbed by his hair, pull his head back, and Marlo Earhart, my football friend, proceeds to drop three elbows to his face, blood sprays everywhere. And I see this kid melt into the floor. I don't even know what happened to him. And Marlo's like, motherfucker, pay the price, bitch. Because <laughs> he talked like Mike Tyson, even though he's 290 pounds of sheer muscle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Sweet when you sing walk, man. I'm like, thanks, Marlo. So like, you, uh, I don't know what happened. So you killed kid. someone. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't. I feel bad in a way, but at the same time, Marlo was the point. Motherfucker paid the price. Wow. So, uh, joking aside, but it's just like, I mean, Marlo was like, like if a pit bull was a human being, like a very loyal. <laughs> oh, God. One of my favorite stories of Marlo Earhart, the, the two that stand out in mind, and just as a shout out to my buddy Marlo back from college football, one of this, the, like the most loyal friends. The two stories that stand out, we were at the pub, famous spot in Ellensburg. Yeah. For like where the hot girls would hang out. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. So of course Sarah's there. I'm barely <laughs> in the beginning stages of dating Sarah. But there's this kid that's on the basketball team at Central who lived next to her. I had a huge crush on her. I knew this. She's waiting in line to use the restroom because poor girl's always having to wait in line. Shocking. He had a huge yeah, crush on Sarah. Yeah. He comes over and he like lays a kiss on her right in line while we are just the beginning stages of dating. I'm not around to see this because, like I said, I hated this stuff. I was like over in another room. But Marlo sees this. And he says something. Guys are coming to tell me. Like, what does Sarah do? She's like, hey, lock up. But she's been friends with this guy for a long time. So she's kind of like, hey, not cool, but like, no, you should know better, but it doesn't imagine a million years. Now, the funny thing is this kid, Troy, I used to see him all the time in the weight room, in the cage at yeah. the center of that <laughs> shitty cage. weight room we had. And uh, I used to see him like all the time. Also, I can't, so I can't find it because I'm like, I wanted to just talk to him. Like, don't disrespect, like, that's disrespectful, man. Like, respect Sarah, but respect me too. Like, we're buddies. Like, we were kind of friends. Like, he was a decent enough guy. But that really pissed me off. Couldn't find the guy. He like turned into a ghost. So this is where I'm done playing and I'm like a, a grad assistant coaching one more year because I got to finish because a lot of people go to school for seven years and they're not all doctors. Uh, <laughs> I'm like running study hall because I'm a GA for the football team and I'm going through and of course Marlo's in study hall. He's not the brightest academic talent we had. And all of a sudden, like I've already done roll call. I know everybody's there. It's supposed to be at study hall that night over at Shaw Smizer, the old business hall. I hear the door open by my turn around. Troy walks in. He is beat to shit. Like his face is so swollen. Black guy is no. I am sorry. I disrespected you and Sarah. I will never disrespect you and Sarah again. I am so sorry. And then Marlo's in the front. He's like, <laughs> Oh my <laughs> god! Like, Marlo goes, motherfucker. <laughs> it's like a like a Adam Sandler comedy movie like, or something. He's just crazy. But this is Marlo. Like you disrespect it for like like I said, it's like a pit bull. Like Lord, how dare you do that to my master? I'm gonna like. And not that I was like yeah. by any means, but Marlo was so loyal. Like. I remember Robbie and I at a house party because Robbie wasn't old enough to drink and his buddy from Tacoma came and his friend's just reenacting a fight in the garage. He's trying to show Robbie, but he looked like he grabbed Robbie by the shirt and had his arm back. Marlo bolts across the garage. He he's really like, is like a pit bull. He's like, like a a a <laughs> he grabs a kid by his throat with two hands and up against the wall. And this is a big fuck? dude, but Marlo was like freaking yoked, scary yoked, like probably not natural. No. <laughs> and he goes, I'm going to kill you, motherfucker. Robbie's like, no, that's my friend. And Jesus. He's like, the he's like, oh, and then he picks picks up a beer. Like he dropped half his cup. So he goes, here you go. And like pats him on the back. Oof. Have a nice night. And he walks away. I'm like, holy shit, man. And his friend goes, I pissed myself. <laughs> oh my God. Like, literally Robbie's friend pissed himself. For Marlo real? Grabbed him by, yeah, it was either that or the beer spill. I don't know. I think he was, because wow. when a man that's 295 pounds yeah. grabs you by your throat and picks you off the ground, and this kid probably had to be like 225, 230. He was kind of a chubby little bit and gets pinned against the wall by your neck. Oh, like a 225 is like a small guy. To Marlo. <laughs> I'm just saying like the individuals, I don't know about you, but some of the individuals I met at Central were just some of the most unique, strange, and amazing. Like that place... <laughs> It's just magical from not only meeting the love of my life, obviously, but at the same yeah. time, friends like you. And I know Johnny was there for a short time or Derek Akers. Like there was just these strange people Derek, that were, you know, that it was just like every now and then he still sends a little something on social, but like, it's just like, it was an amazing place. The fact that Lee went up there right when I was up there too. So yeah. I just, I don't know, man. I just have such fond memories of what central provided me. Um, and just that opportunity. So basically to, I, I'm learning that I'm good at recruiting Andy to come to Phoenix and we're good at recruiting Lee to come to Ellensburg, Ethan to come to Ellensburg, Ellensburg? to meet his wife. Dude, uh, like, you've missed your call. You got to be recruiting. 
Like what? <laughs> hey, Arizona State, U of A. Like, let's get on. This is one of the greatest recruiters <laughs> I've ever met. Hey, what are we doing? Stop fucking around. Hire let's, uh, let's get to this, man. Let's yeah. get to it. Yeah, maybe no, I should be like a like should be talent scout. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You're going to scout some talent in Scottsdale tomorrow? Oh! There you go. Oh! <laughs> so, so ridiculous. Dumb. So, dumb. <laughs> so, so um, what else is going on, buddy? Other than enjoying uh, the blow, like what, like a hairdryer type heat of Arizona. Yeah, it's it's... So it's an interesting heat, right? So it's it like is. basically like an oven, right? Yeah. So you like you open an oven and so you that, get that, oh. that boom, right? So when you walk out of a nice air conditioned yeah. in, apartment or something. When I went to Wisconsin for the first time. Oh, the and it was like, you know, the humidity. Legit. That's a different. So it, like when you open up the door, it's kind of like, what is the description of that? It's, it's like going into the wrestling room, like the smell, the humidity, the thickness of the air, like this, the weight. I What did I describe it as like to my mom when I, I was like a little kid, you know, and I, I, I was like, it's like someone's breathing into my mouth. Yeah, like, I was like, this is gross. Yeah. And she's like, they laugh, they laugh so hard. They're like, that was a great description. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it is. A way of description. So. Yeah. I didn't think it was funny. I thought it was like, I was like, what is this? Oh, what? What? Like, no, it's humid. It's we humidity. get some humidity back in Seattle in the summers, but nothing like the no, Midwest. No, no. Nothing like the Midwest. West. Yeah, not like the uh, like it's down more in more humidity than here. Yeah, so you've been to Mexico. Yeah. Was it was it humid when you went to Mexico? Yeah, but like I've only been to Mazatlan with Lee in college. That's a pod that we need to have sometime. Really? Oh my! I have God. you guys on that on Either. a spring break trip with Delana and Melissa, Melissa and, and Bobby, Bobby, yes. the three and <laughs> Danielle. All four. Okay. Oh wow! I didn't know it was all four. All of them. four. Okay. Because Melissa's parents had like a timeshare some and then i went with sarah to cancun and that felt a lot more humid there i don't know if the baja side is a lot more dry but it makes sense with like the i don't know f- for whatever reason but um or maybe it was just because that was yeah you get that summer. like uh, it's like all that like uh, texas florida louisiana yeah. you know all that that caribbean yeah it's got it does the humidity was pretty intense over there and we were we weren't in cancun proper we we're just below that in like playa de carmen or something. gotcha yeah that's, that's the place to go now the caribbean yeah but it was pretty amazing. And I, I will say all inclusive is the way to go. That's pretty, pretty. A lot, most of the places now are down. That's kind they're of kind of like, yeah, that's the appeal of Mexico, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but no, that's, uh, I say that's just a big, I, I don't know. Mexico was, it, it was the, the humidity is intense. This is just so different. Like this reminds me more of home, but this is like it, the temperatures turned to intense. Right. Like we're getting hot right now in Hermiston too. And it's a very dry desert heat, but it's just, it's that desert desert. Like, yeah, I'm still amazed too. Like you guys are so much, we're considered a high plains desert. The, the elevation here is considerably higher than people realize. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, like 1,200 feet or something above sea level up here. Yeah, if you go up to, if are you going? You guys are going to Flagstaff. We are planning to. Yeah. Okay. So, like, when you go up you. towards that, that like up north, it it's so, it's so funny driving driving up north because you'll see cat lots of cactus and stuff like that and then you'll see like different kinds of trees and then all of a sudden it kind of like turns into like oh it's like kind of like washington <laughs> you know it's like okay. oh okay it slowly turns into like a different like state you know all Pine different kinds. yeah it's like whoa yeah. this is very kind of cool yeah so and that, that's that's the cool thing about arizona too is like it's 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 kind of like washington in the fact that variety different kinds East of West. yeah yeah it's different kinds of more, right little variety going on here that's pretty cool yeah no it's it's been really cool coming down here and just like once again uh Super appreciative that you had the time and made the time to to help show Sarah and I a good time here in AZ, man. I love the fact that you are kind of like the host of these last shows that <laughs> I've had you on. They're, they're, it's kind of fun being the uh, sitting back, just answering questions from you guys. Maybe I'll have uh, Lee do the same thing one time again. It's always, it's always fun. Yeah, It's so. always a fun, brother. Right on, man. Anything else you'd like to add? No, man. Hey, subscribe. <laughs> oh. um, follow. Subscribe. Follow, yep. follow. There you go, Sorry, Johnny. I oh, Johnny! Your logo. <laughs> I like how we have Johnny here, like, like he's like, like he's dead, and we just we have a, like a Johnny an urn here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare leave us, Johnny Rosich. And so I think that's the next thing we got to we got to just figure a time where Lee and Jet, like, we bring everybody down to the AC, and we just figure out a way to just hang out and have a good time. That'd be, be pretty epic. amazing. That'd, That'd be, be amazing. Epic. So yeah. I don't know how. I'm planting the seed, gentlemen. Start devising your ways. There it is. There Sell it is. your children for milk and money. And then we'll make it down here. <laughs> I've already sold Riker. I'm a whale. I'm all ahead of the game. So. <laughs> all right. Thanks again, buddy. Yeah. Thanks again for coming on. For Ethan McDonald, my name's Josh. And as always, thank you for being a friend. <laughs>